Hi Floss Tube, it is Helen D. I'm back a week early. Um, today is actually Monday, the 21st of October. I will post this on Tuesday. <clears throat> I'm just back from the Stitch New England retreat with a table full of so many things I'm going to have to reach <laughs> that I wanted to record uh, my kind of recap and update now so that I can get some things put away and get some sense of normalcy back to my <laughs> stitching area getting ready for and then going to a retreat and then coming back. Anyone who's been there knows there's stuff. <laughs> it spreads um, to get ready and then to come back. It's just different stuff. So the Stitch New England retreat is put on by Pam and Kevin of Stitch New England. The shop is in Massachusetts, um, North Attleboro, I believe. The retreat this year was at a different location. It was in West Warwick, Rhode Island at the Crown Plaza Hotel. Uh, it was fantastic. The, the venue was great. It was huge. <laughs> it was a great big hotel. You could tell it was a big events center because they had a couple of ballrooms and a lot of like smaller rooms that you could use um, in the time that we were there. We were in one ballroom. I saw a very fancy wedding in another ballroom. There was a celebration of life. There was a Daughters of the American Revolution conference brunch. I'm not meeting. I'm not sure what theirs was. And there was a murder mystery dinner. <laughs> All kind of in different rooms while we were there. Uh, so we had the ballroom and then Pam and Kevin had set up um, like a shopping annex in one of the other smaller rooms. Um, although it was, it was a big room um, with a bunch of trunk shows and Pam brought a lot of stock from her shop. She brought all the fabric from her shop. They brought their flosses, like the floss racks um, and a bunch of, I think the newest charts, like the newest released charts. She didn't bring everything. That would have been a lot. <laughs> so we had a great time. I think there were right around... Oh, Amy's going to eat a ladybug, so hopefully she decides that wasn't a mistake. The window's open because it's 75 today. Um, I think there were around 260 people. So I will warn you, I'm going to forget names. I'm going to forget things. I'm going to get confused. <laughs> it's just how it's going to be. So we drove down. I drove down with uh, my sister Donna and my friends Tina and Cheryl. We, Tina and Donna and I met at my house because I'm kind of, they come to me and then we go to Cheryl and then off we went. We were planning on taking my car. Um, we are not light packers. Cheryl is a light packer. The rest of us were not. <laughs> so Tina ended up driving. Um, she had a bigger car than I did. Um, we jammed everything in. We told, I texted Cheryl a picture and I'm like, pack light or you're riding on the roof. <laughs> so we packed her in went down. It wasn't that bad. I think it was three hours from Portland. Um, we went around Boston, so we didn't have to go through. The traffic wasn't bad. Um, so we got there and they did registration and stuff a little different this year. They did so that just the doors opened, everyone kind of piled in, grabbed their seats, and then it was like a self-registration up front. There was a table with you just check your name off. The bags, everyone's goodie bag was labeled. Um, so you could kind of do that when the line died down, right? Like we got to our table and got settled in. And then when we saw there was no line up there, we just went up and grabbed our, our bag and checked in. Um, so it, I sat with Donna, Tina, and Cheryl. And then Karen and Laura, who sat with us last year, sat with us again this year. So <clears throat> we all sat together. We had kind of like a little cul-de-sac of friends. <laughs> so it was us. And then one of the tables next to us was um, Missy and Kathy of Toon Heels Pulling Thread, Jane from the Boss Stitchers. Chris was not able to make it and we missed her. Um, Alicia, the fanciful flamingo, came up from Florida. Rhode Island Deb, who probably didn't have very far to go. And Tracy of OG Stitchery was at one table. And then another table was kind of some other Mainers. There was Teresa, who owns the Crafty Grimalkin, Rosalie and Jenny, and I think they had two other people at their table. They might have one empty. Oh, um, Teresa's husband, Joe. I'm like, who was the other one? Um, he's just gotten into stitching, so he was there. Um, Brandy and Emma 
Stephanie, uh, Brandy and Emma are B and, e, B and E Stitchery. Stephanie, the New England Stitcher. Uh, her good friend Sarah, who's her like co-teacher at school. Um, it was so great to finally meet Sarah because we've heard a lot about her. Sarah, you're in our tribe now, whether you like it or not. You're in there. <laughs> um, Jill, who I hadn't met. I, I had met Jill, but Jill was at the table. And then Erin Elizabeth came down from Canada to stitch with us. So she was at their table as well. So that was kind of our little cul-de-sac of tables um so what do we want to talk about first um i'll probably kind of just talk about how things went and then i have like table gifts and gifty things and purchases and we'll talk about what i stitched kind of on the days i stitched it i brought three new starts and one whip that's what i decided to bring with i touched everything i actually stitched more this retreat than I think I ever have. So that was nice. <laughs> I didn't yap as much and I stitched more. So the retreat started at three o'clock on Thursday, which this was the first one I'd been to that started, like officially started the day before. Sometimes people are there and they're in the lobby and stuff, but this was like 3 p.m. Um, that was fantastic because by the time Saturday, like you got through Thursday and then we did all day Friday and we're all like, wow, we have like a whole other day, a whole eight to midnight other day. So it was really, really nice. So we got settled in, we visited. You know, when I grabbed my goodie bag, I stopped and talked to Erin, two martini stitchers. She came back. Um, that's a long, long, long flight for her. So I chatted with her. Um, Amy and Mary Lou of Two Crossed Stitches, Stitchers. I always get that one wrong. Um, you know, I sat, saw them and talked to them. So Thursday, I started stitching wise. I didn't really start. This is the one that I had outlined. I brought, oh, it got all squished. This is what happens. Music in the Woodlands, it's Stitches by Ethel. It's still in the plastic because the chart is a color chart and it's just on the other side. So I just, I just left it in there and I just flipped it over and stitch. I outlined the little squirrel and I got that much <laughs> filled in. Um, and then I got a little tired of brown, so I put this one away and started something else brown. <laughs> this is an unknown fabric. It was just a scrap. It's a 16 count. So this is now in my whips, Music in the Woodlands. So then the other thing that I started, I had brought with me, oops, sorry if I just hit the camera. Oops. I had brought, <laughs> stuff falling everywhere, from Cherry Blossoms, this Vintage Ornaments Set 1. And I started with the reindeer, center start, it's brown. I didn't get very much done on this and then I was just too tired and I went to bed. Um, this fabric might be, picture this plus glacier. <coughs> it was also kind of a scrap, so I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, this one, I think I have all of the called for colors, except one or two I might've had to just sub out something similar. So that's those two pieces that I worked on. Friday night I tried to go to bed a little early. Um, I wanted to make sure I was fully rested for the next day. So I went up and I went to bed and I slept terrible. <laughs> I was up, I was, I just didn't sleep. So around like 6.30, like, forget it. I'm just gonna take my shower. I shared with Donna, so I'm trying not to wake her up. I thought, I'm just gonna take my shower and get ready. And then the room opened, I think at eight, possibly seven, but I think eight. <coughs> and I'm like, I'm just gonna go down and see who's there. I knew the other girls from my table weren't gonna be there quite that early, but I'll just go down. So I went down and, um, 
Rachel and Deborah, and Deborah is Kensington Cross Stitch. They were at a group with some Connecticut stitchers, and I had, Rachel and I stood in line <laughs> to do some shopping the night before, but I hadn't seen Deborah yet, and I'm like, perfect. So I grabbed one of my pieces, I don't even know which one, and I went over and I sat down with them and stitched for a while, and then uh, Donna and I were doing a shift, a volunteer shift in the shopping annex, so you know, I stitched for a while, and then I think we had to be in there a quarter of nine. Um, to be trained on the register. And I don't even think I messed up too bad. <laughs> I did okay. Um, so we did our shift. It was really interesting to see what everyone was buying. Right? There were definitely some trends. Um, I don't know how many trunk shows she had, but somewhere between 15 and 20. And like I said, a lot of stuff from her shop and fabric from Atomic Ranch and Forbidden Fiber. Um, I swear to you, 50 people from that retreat got a cut of Pumpkin King from Atomic Ranch, which is the orange fabric that I'm stitching, which is hollow on. It's a great Halloween fabric. They had sent a lot of it in all the different counts, and I rang up a lot of it. Um, so that was fun to kind of see. I was actually surprised Sunday morning I was in there to get a floss, and I kind of gotta look. So I looked and there was still a couple cuts left, which surprised me <laughs> that there was any left, given how many I rang through the register. So that was fun. Um, after our shift, we went to lunch. Um, my friend Amy of Gable Stitcher, she wasn't able to go to the retreat this year because they had some family stuff this weekend already planned, so she wasn't able to go. But she lives fairly close. So she said, I can meet you guys for lunch um, Friday during the school day. <laughs> So the main, like me and Cheryl and Tina and Donna and then Lynette of Homesteading on the home front and some ladies from her table, we all went and met, Lynette, uh, met Amy for lunch and caught up and I dropped off uh, the two pieces that I picked up at Goodwill over the summer that were going to live with Amy. They now live with Amy and she had a gift for me. <laughs> um, I don't know if it was last year's I don't remember when it was, but at some point I had gone through and UFO'd some things, decided these are going to be unfinished objects, UFOs, and I'm just not gonna finish them. And one of them was a Biscornu from Heartstrung Samplery. I had two of the birds, maybe three, I don't even remember. I just was like, I'm not enjoying stitching it, I'm gonna UFO it. And Amy stitches big, giant, gorgeous pieces not smalls. We always tease her. She'll come out with something that's like 200 by 200 and we'll be like, oh, Amy, that's an ornament for you. And she said, Helen, send it to me. I'll finish it for you. That's tiny. It won't take me any time at all. So I sent her my whip, chart, my floss, and she finished stitching it for me and fully finished it. So it's big. This is a big biscorn. Mine's on a 16 count. So like if this were a 40 count, it would be it was the B Mine Biscornu. So that's the top. And then the bottom has the little like envelopes and just some little parts in the corner. I've never fully finished a Biscornu. I've still never fully finished a Biscornu. So Amy was so sweet. She said, Helen, you're always finishing things for other people. I thought it would be nice for you to have something completely done that then you didn't have to do. So it's so beautiful. And she was so sweet to do it for me. So now when Valentine's Day season comes out, I can put out my giant Be My Bus for you. So I love it. Thank you, Amy. Tuck that in there. When we got back from lunch, we had a new start. Um, me and Tina and Cheryl and Brandy and Emma had all planned on starting um, I believe it's Woodland Critters Tear. Let me undig. Oh, I never even showed you what was in the goodie bag. We'll get there. I believe it is Woodland Critters Tear, but let me check the actual title. Woodland Critters Tear from Erin Elizabeth. So we had planned on starting, there's the name, this chart, which was a fairly new release from Erin. Um, so we had fabric, we were ready to go. Then, Donna 
and Karen and Laura were easily influenced because this is available as a PDF on Aaron's website. So they were able to just pop over, get the PDF, go in the shop, get some fabric. And between me and Tina and Cheryl, we had the floss <laughs> and it's all DMC. So we all started. And then another woman from the table behind us, who I believe Jan, um, she's going to join in too, but she ordered, she ordered the chart, uh, uh, printed, so she just didn't have it yet, but she's going to join in too. And we all started the Woodland Critters tier. So here's mine and then we'll talk. <laughs> so that's how far I got. I like to do these tiers. I do like I start in the middle and then I do kind of the bubbles and then I can do the straight lines without having to count as much. So it's a little faster. Um, and then I can go in and like, if I'm filling up here in this color and I have a little bit left, like this leaf, I had some of this color left. And so I just, I can count off something to do it. So mine is on Into the Woods 14 Count Ada from Atomic Ranch. When Erin showed this on her floss tube, when she first released it, maybe a month ago, she was showing how she started stitching it on a lighter green, like a sage green Ada. And she said it looked great, but I knew it wouldn't photograph well. So she kind of cut and run <laughs> and then had to restitch the one for the model. But what she ended up doing was she cut off, there's so much stuff I gotta lean. She cut off all this down here and made it into a tree. And it's super cute. And I thought, well, that's what I'm gonna do. Except then, I didn't count very well. So, in order to make it a tree, that should be my bottom. I do not have very much left up there on the top. So, I'm gonna have to see if I have enough fabric to make the tree. If not, I definitely have enough fabric to add the base of the tree and finish it a different way. So, we, we shall see. And I did change, we changed the green. Um, the original call for green just on this darker kind of greeny fabric just didn't work. So we went in the shop and we picked out three, three, four, five. Pam had her DMCs, so I need to throw that one on a bobbin. So that's what we what we got through. There's like strings. It's a mess. So that was kind of our new start. I worked on that the rest of the day Saturday, and that's all I worked on on Sunday. I keep feeling it was Saturday and Sunday. It was not, it was Friday and Saturday. I worked on that Friday and Saturday. Um, and then I'll just show you my last whip and then we'll get into all these other things. The other thing that I brought with me was something I thought would be good for kind of late at night. I was planning on driving, um, but then I ended up not, and this ended up working out really well for the car. <laughs> I'm working on Evening Stroll from Autumn Lane. This was in their Halloween box in 2023. Um, they haven't released it yet. But it had some big blocks of color, so I outlined them. And then I could just fill them in, work on filling them in. And even better, there's a lot of backstitch in this area and part of it, this little frame came with it, so some of it will be covered by the frame. Sorry, it's a mess. So I'm like, if my stitches don't look great because they were in the car, they're gonna get kind of covered up. Um, so I worked on that a little on the way down and a little on the way back. And that was all of my stitching. So what's on the rest of the table? <laughs> um, Smalls Exchange, we'll talk that, and then we'll go through the other stuff. So, I love the Smalls Exchange because you get so many ideas of how to finish things and seeing them in person and different things that people do. Um, I made the witch, the, the witch's inn on the tall spool that I had shown in a couple videos, a few videos ago when I finished it. And I was back to the smallest table and you take your small and you open it at the table. So I was opening mine and ooing and aahing and someone said, oh, Helen, who got yours? And I turned around and I said, oh, mine's still up there. Oh wait, Kathy took it. 
So Kathy from Two Needles, Two Needles Pulling Thread, who was in, I believe, the last group, grabbed my small. So she got my witch, and my small came from Rosalie from Maine, who was right next to us, um, and she said who it is. Okay, so it was kind of a twofer. So there's a matchbox piece. That's from a Blackbird Designs sampler. And then this little pinwheel is from Pineberry Lane. So the pinwheel in this really sweet card. So this is like pins. So that's a little Pineberry Lane. And then this is a little piece of fabric that looks like the top of a spool. So that was in there and really cute. And then the big one it was in this tall, like craft paper brown bag with a sprig of um, really pretty red, like berries. Oh, here comes Emmy. She's going to power through everything. So, here it is far away. I probably have to do a little rearranging. We were very careful not to squish this in the car. And then there's the stitching. And she made a little tiny pin cushion. So it's an old um, matchbox. Emmy, I know you're right here and I tried to keep this away from you because I don't want you eating it. She's giving it a sniff. She's wondering where her water is. It's on the other side. There was too much stuff on her normal side, so it's on the other side. She's already drank from it once, so she'll be okay. Um, so that was from Rosalie. I'm going to put that somewhere up high so that that one doesn't give out little, little chomp chomps. Okay, because I forgot to show you, this was our goodie bag. And in here this year we had um, the schedule. So this kind of had the schedule of events and you know a, a guide of where everything was. Um, I'm just looking, well, they were open at 7 a.m. I wouldn't be there at 7 a.m. <laughs> We have a chart from Stitchy Pros called A Beacon of Hope. Um, Stitchy Pros had a trunk show. So Stitchy Pros, A Beacon of Hope. The flosses for that chart were in there. A couple little charms, a 2024 and a lighthouse. Some little Stitch New England snips um, and then I know Stephanie from the New England Stitcher made these a little like the bigger kind of the bigger floss they're not really floss cards but they're great for trims so and then this is um, I'm guessing Lady Dot um, chenille so that is what was in our goodie bag um, table gifts I noticed this year there were fewer people going around with like individual groups for everyone. It's 260 people. That is a lot. That is a lot of work. <laughs> and that is a lot of things, right? They add up. So there's still, there absolutely were some, but more people were focused, I think, on, hey, don't rip up the screen. What are you doing? Um, they did table gifts for their tables. So there were six people per table, so people would bring in a table gift. So. What I did, I had found these little flip top trash cans um, at Target. They were with like the college kind of back to, back to school stuff. And then um, they are still some available. They're from Bright Room. And this pops off. And mine's been living upstairs in this my jar. So I had this, <clears throat> I kitted up um, a freebie chart from Tiny Modernist that said Autumn and it had a couple squirrels in it and I think it used five skeins of DMC. I kitted up that and then I made these little zipper pulls. Yeah, I hear you. So I made these little squirrel and acorn zipper pulls. And the only washi tape I had was Halloween. So, oh well. So that's what I made. Um, for my table and then I had tried to make as many b charms as I had. I made some little bags to go to like joint tables and I made them in packs of six <laughs> so that I could do like a table, a table, a table. Um, 
You can tell it's a nice day. There's the motorcycle. So, Tina gave us thread keeps uh, or ort, ort catchers that she had made. And inside, there was some floss cards and an adorable little bling. I'm gonna put that as a zipper. And some stickers and a thing of tea, which John can have. Um, salted caramel, he'll drink that. So that was from Tina. Cheryl made these cute, like felted, she didn't make them, she bought these and then she turned them into scissor fobs goes and the tiny snips which saved me because I lost my I couldn't find my scissors I found them when I got home um, so that was from Cheryl uh, Donna gave us a bag of candies and then some the stitch me silk and some of the little um, the thingies that you can hold your fabric on Q-snaps and then also some needle threaders and then these I think she said were also ones that can hold your um they're meant to hold bobbins but they're like teeny tiny like little close ones so that was in there Laura <clears throat> this is a great super easy super useful we were all raving about them she gave everyone at our table a bottle of stitcher's lotion perfect she had a variety of scents. We got to smell them all. <laughs> Mine is, mmm, peach. There was a cinnamon one. There was a raspberry lemon or a raspberry one or blackberry. There was all these different scents. So we got to like sniff them all. <clears throat> and Karen gave us some healthier snacks. <laughs> some peanuts and cheeses. You'll see mine aren't open. It was also some like peeps and stuff in here. Okay, hold on now, it's gonna be loud. And then a pair of scissors with this really cool stitcher scissor phone. So that was really cool. So those were our like table gifts. Um, <clears throat> some of the other things, like I said, that kind of went around. Um, Bird Island Deb had made these tomato pins. She had a couple extra, so she gave me one. Um, just for some kind of other ideas, there was some floss drops with some flosses. And I believe, at least this is a silk, but I think she said these two, the stitcher who was giving these out, were Color and Cotton sometimes sells big hanks, like they have mist eye hanks. So you can buy like this 50 yard hank for a really good price and then she just cut them up and put them on flush drops to share. Um, ow, ow. <laughs> there were pins, there were some flush drops. Um, Tina put together a little baggie. This is what she gave to everyone not at the table, but we got one too. Um, glasses wipes, lens wipes, that's always good. Um, so just like little, little things. Like I said, there were some little things that went around. Um, now my floor's covered in stuff. And then I had a few gifts. Um, Stephanie and Sarah, they put together for their table this adorable little packet, which was cuter. <laughs> it was wrapped in like a nice little bag with some stuff on the bottom but I took it out. <laughs> so they made, Stephanie made these bags. Um, she did like the sublimation, I think they said. Um, they gave me one as a thank you because I've sent some things over. I've, I've passed some things on to Stephanie that I thought they could use for their cross stitch club. They have a cross stitch club at the middle school with the kids. So I've, all, I've passed some fabrics and charts and things. And so they made these little mason ort jars. And Stephanie is, you know, the queen of the wood laser cutting. She made a lid. Um, they also gave you the regular lid if you wanted to use it as a regular. And then scissors 
and everything was like lighthousey New England themed. Um, Stephanie made uh, this little, this is a needle threader and she made it a mag, uh, needle minder so that you could find stuff. And then Sarah made um, like thread bling in this really, really cute um, needle minder. Ooh, that's gonna show up real good. I might make this my new um, cross stitch in the forest because it's very kind of nature-y. I mean, it's ocean themed, but a lot of the ones in there have water in them too. So that was from them. Even a cute little tag, like the whole, the whole package was perfection. <laughs> um, Michelle was there from Arizona and she gave me a little gift. It's got a couple like nail file and a needle minder And she gave me this piece of um, Middle Earth Ada from Be Stitch Me. Yeah, that's better. It's kind of pinky, like a pinky brown. And then, Michelle, I have to tell you, I saw this in here and I didn't. It's a snap tray. It's a cat. I'm going to have to keep this, either just give it to him or keep it away from my son. Um, he's going to want this for D&D. Because really, they can be for D&D or for us. So, it's like one of those little trays. It's got a tail and his little cat face. So, that was from Michelle. I've run out of room. Erin um, Elizabeth made me this beautiful bag. She's so sweet. I sent her home with some gummy lobsters for her kids. And she put a little bag of, let's see, she had like a needle minder, not a needle minder, but a, a thread bling, some Canada playing cards. They're covered with stickers, but they have the Canadian flag on them. And a pen that's also a ruler. And then a bag of Canadian candy. <laughs> so that's fun. It was so nice to meet her and get to spend some time with her. Um, and then Lisa, hold on. Lisa, there was orts on your bag. Lisa is with Handcrafted by Harvey, Lisa Harvey. Um, she has an Etsy shop, which I know you probably can't read it from that, but I will link it below. Lisa does <clears throat> project bags, but embroidered project bags. So she made some of these for some of the floss tubers that were there. So there's, there's the front. Got my dead, dead lobster needle minder, uh, zipper pull. This really, really cute fabric. And then get ready for it. I have a personalized project bag. How cute is that? It was really, really thoughtful of her. So, love it. Um, so like I said, I will put her down below. She had some others, like she was using one that was um, like more of a Christmas theme. Um, they, they were all beautiful. We snooped her. We snooped her Etsy shop to check them out. And they were really, really cute. And that's all gonna fall. I'm almost done. <laughs> I'm almost done because I'm on to purchases. And surprisingly, there weren't that many. Um, two other small gifts. Sarah has started to try dyeing some fabrics. Um, a lot of times the stuff that like I've given her and other people have given them for the kids, um, there's a lot of white Ada. Ada is great for the kids because they're just learning, but they want the colors. <laughs> so Sarah has been dyeing the fabrics. So some of these small cuts, like for practicing and stuff, she had some. So she had me pick out a couple. And they're gorgeous. I think it will show better not folded, un not unfolded. This is a blue. Like, I can never get dyed fabrics to look that good. Especially Ada, it's because it's a little thicker. It seems to go harder. And this one, I love. They said they're gonna start doing some dyeing. That's blown out with the kids. 
like there's no white on this. Whenever I would do them, I'd always end up with white spots where the dye didn't, didn't quite go. So for purchases for me, I was really good. I bought a, a skein of DMC, a skein of Weeks, and three pieces of fabric. <laughs> Two I have a plan for, and one is just because. Um, this one is my Just Because. It's Bayou from Atomic Ranch, uh, and I got a 28 count Lugana. I got fat quarters of all of them. <clears throat> it was just so pretty. So that is Bayou in the Lugana. Honestly, the Lugana I thought was prettier than the Ada because it dyes different. This particular color just wasn't quite as earthy in the Ada. The other two pieces I got were Ada. This one is Lavender from Atomic. All of them that I got happened to be from Atomic. So this one is Lavender. And then the last one is Phantasm. And this one I have a piece I'm hoping to start soon that when I do, I'll show you. This is blue, but it's probably gonna look purple. Um, but it's blue. It's like a gray blue. I don't even know if there's any purple in it, but it sure is looking purple on camera. So that's Phantasm. So I was in line to get the Bayou cut. And a woman, I was on this side, and there was another woman on this side, and she was getting a fat quarter of this one cut. And I said, I'll take her other fat quarter. <laughs> like, I have a piece I want to start, and that color is perfect. So I'm going to, it's a Halloween piece, and I know we're almost there, but I'm going to start it anyway. And then the only other thing is Lynette grabbed this off the freebie table. Um, I didn't even, I, I walked by, I left plenty, <laughs> like I don't need more. She's like, I don't know if you have this one. And I didn't, it's the Yankee Stitcher and it's called By the Sea. And this is from 2007. So there's, it's got these really like funny seagulls in it. And a dead lobster. So I thought that's really cute. It's not, it's not dense. Um, 57 by 171. So, it's just, I don't think it would take that long because it's not that dense. I love those seagulls with their super long legs. So that came from the freebie table. I think that's it. I think that's everything. Um, they are doing it again next year. It will be at the same location. The dates are a little different. They're a little earlier. So it will be October 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, which is a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, Pam will have more information, I'm sure, when we get closer to registration time. I don't think we registered until, like it was after Christmas. I think it was the beginning of the year sometime when we registered. Um, retreats are amazing. If, if you have the opportunity, it's so nice to see other stitchers and see what people are working on and just to talk to them about things and learn things and get ideas and ask questions. Um, a lot of people came over to say hi, you know, and thank me for making floss tube videos. And it's so nice to see them and see what other people are working on. I didn't get any pictures of the brag table, but wow. Um, there was a few on there that just looked like photographs. There was this one of a dragon. It was a full coverage, which I don't do. And it was extraordinary. Like it caught my eye immediately. It was so good. Um, I think by the end we had three like double length tables for brag tables. Um, they call it the ta-da table. Um, <clears throat> yeah, if you get the chance, even if it's not a big retreat, even if it's you're going to your library and they have something where there's a small group at Panera, give it a try. Um, there were first time people here and they all said it was really great and they would come back because everyone is very welcoming. And if you don't know anyone going in, you know 259 people when you go out. <laughs> um, if people have an empty spot at their table, they did again this year where they had a balloon at every table and once your table was filled up, you went and took your balloon and put it in another area so that when people came in, if they were by themselves, they could easily see if there's a balloon on the table, there's a seat. So you didn't have to worry about finding someone to sit with. Um, so that I think that's really nice, especially if you're there by yourself and you're kind of like, I don't know anyone find a balloon, you've just found five new friends. <laughs> so 
Um, huge thank you again to Pam and Kevin and Pam's parents and Tracy from OG Stitchery. She did a lot of the help this year, um, coordinating like volunteer schedules and stuff. Um, Rachel and Deborah ran the Smalls Exchange. I know a lot of people helped set up trunk shows and then a bunch of us helped different shifts in the annex and then packing up trunk shows. Um, it, it seemed from my end, right? I don't know about the back end. <laughs> Pam might tell you differently, but from my end, smooth. <laughs> like I didn't notice, it seemed to run really, really smooth and everyone was laughing and yucking it up and having a good time. <laughs> so that is Stitch New England. Um, I have no more retreats this year. Next year, I'm going to the library stitchers in April. There is a wait list for that. And then I'll go to Stitch Maine. We don't have a date for that yet. That's a one-day stitch retreat. So we will go to, um, it's usually up in Hollowell. We'll go to Stitch Maine. That's a one-day. And then I'll go to Stitch New England again, as long as there's no school stuff that weekend. October's hard because you don't quite know yet what the school year is going to bring. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to go again next year. So I feel like I'm losing my voice because I talked too much. And now I just talked a lot more. <laughs> so I'm going to let you go. And I will talk to you guys. It might be next week, it might be the week after. We'll find out together. <laughs> Bye.